Hi, I'm Chef Anthony Serrano, and welcome to my kitchen. You're in luck, because today I'm gonna teach you how to make the best prime rib you've ever tasted. We'll start by choosing the very best cut of beef. Then I'll teach you how to prepare it on its journey to your dinner table. I'm gonna be teaching you a lot of fun stuff, and I bet you're getting hungry. So let's get cooking. When I take time to make a prime rib, I like to take things to the next level. That's why most of the time I end up ordering a Snake River Farms American Wagyu prime rib. First, safely defrost your prime rib. I use my Boss Defrost to get the job done quickly and safely. Keep it in the fridge until you're ready to start prepping and cooking. Carefully remove it from its packaging. Don't want to cut away the packaging and hurt this beautiful bundle of joy. Might notice some small pieces of meat and fat you want to trim away. Just don't go crazy. These flecks and swirls of fat aren't just there for decoration. That is what will give us tons of flavor, that melt in your mouth sensation, and what will keep this prime rib nice and juicy. For the butter rub, I started with two sticks of softened Kerrygold garlic and herb butter, half a cup of chipotle, and finally, a half a cup of horseradish mustard. For the spice rub, combine two tablespoons of granulated garlic, three tablespoons of coarse or kosher salt, one tablespoon of onion powder, and one tablespoon of freshly ground black pepper. Shake it, well, like a salt shaker, and set it aside. A lot of people skip this step, but it doesn't hurt, and all it does is help. The goal here is to help your prime rib keep a uniform shape while it's cooking. Place your prime rib on a baking sheet and rub your butter mixture all over that prime rib. Now, you want the butter to be soft to make it easy to spread. You don't want globs, but a nice, even layer of butter. Don't be shy. Really rub in that butter and spread it all around so that it's nice and even and covers the entire prime rib. I use gloves to make things easier and a bit less messy. So you might be wondering, won't all this butter melt off? Yes, some of the butter will melt off, but it'll be useful in the next step. Next, get your spice rub and start by sprinkling it over the prime rib. Then, firmly but gently, press the spices into the butter coating. Be sure to use enough seasoning on your prime rib. Often, it looks like too much, but it actually isn't enough. After we smothered the chipotle garlic herb mixture all over that prime rib, we set it inside of the refrigerator to let that dry brine soak into that prime rib overnight. Doing that is gonna help us develop an awesome crust. Once this bad boy's been out of room temperature for about an hour, it's time to get cooking. You can cook it in an oven, a grill using an indirect heat, or a smoker. Before I start cooking, I like to place my wire thermometer inside the prime rib. Whether you're using an instant read or practically any other food thermometer, the principles are the same. Typically, from the dimple area to a half inch past is the area of the thermometer that is the most sensitive and the area you want to focus on. That part of the thermometer is the part you want to place in the center of your prime rib. Place the prime rib in an oven or a grill preheated to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. People always ask how long it takes to cook prime rib, and the answer really is as long as it takes. Remove the prime rib from the grill or oven once it's 18 to 20 degrees away from your desired target range. Then immediately crank up the oven to 450 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Continue cooking it until it's eight to 10 degrees away from your desired temperature range. Then immediately remove it from the oven. Carry over cooking will do the rest to get you to the target temperature range. Remember to rest it for 30 minutes. I usually start that 30 minute clock once the carryover cooking stops. For my prime rib, my family likes more on the medium side. So that's what we did. Just remember to remove that twine after you've cooked your prime rib. Doesn't this prime rib look amazing? One of the reasons I love serving prime rib to the family is because everyone has a different preference when it comes to doneness. That's what makes prime rib great. You can accommodate everyone's doneness preferences. The outermost parts of the prime rib are gonna be a bit more done, while the innermost parts are gonna be a bit more rare, making your whole family happy. And isn't that always a great thing? Enough talking, what do you say we dive into this prime rib and see how it turned out? Cheers. Mmm, this is the perfect way to make prime rib. It's foolproof, failproof, whatever word you want to say. I'm telling you, this prime rib recipe is totally tasty, totally easy, and you're gonna love it. So until next time, keep on cooking.